welcome back. So today I would like to talk to you about a performance continuum that I developed about a year ago for leaders, and I've been working on it, modifying it ever since. I think it's a super useful tool for a leader to be able to diagnose the stage of performance of their team, and then based on that to know the way they need to show up and facilitate the group, the kind of the duration and complexity of a task to give to a group, depending upon the level of performance, all the way down to selecting the right process based on the level of performance of a team. So I'd like to walk you through this model with a little bit more depth than that. The first strand of this performance continuum is called observational indicators. And what these really are for is to diagnose the stage of performance of a team, whether it's low, mid, or high. The indicators that you would see for a low-performing team would be lack of eye contact for somebody who's speaking. People aren't looking at that person. There's very little conversation going on. There's very little modeling or mirroring of body posture, if any at all. And so that's the kind of stuff that you would see and or hear as a diagnosis tool. For mid-performing teams, you get a lot of talking. The problem is they're talking about all over the place. They do a lot of bird walking. One person starts a topic and somebody else bridges off of that and goes in a different direction. So it takes an hour and a half to do what might normally take 15 or 20 minutes. They're just not very efficient in terms of their process. So they need to learn how to become very focused. And in that particular case, what you would see is you'd see lots of animation, not a lot of mirroring, a lot of conversation, talking over each other. So that's a mid-performing team. In a high-performing team, what you see is there is a lot of modeling and mirroring that people are looking at the presenter, whoever's talking. People are all looking at them. They tend to be nodding their heads together as they're acknowledging the points. They ask a lot of clarifying questions before other people come in with their opinions. And there's just a lot of synchrony. You can just see it. They're in a flow with each other. So those are the indicators that allow you to diagnose where you are. Once a leader has determined at what level of performance, then they need to show up differently based on that level of performance. So for example, with a low performing team, a leader actually needs to be very active in managing the dynamic that's causing the team to be lower functioning, such as a dominant personality in the group. The goal of the facilitative leader is to prevent them from talking so much, capture their point, and then focusing the attention on other people in the group. In some cases, you need to move from managing the behavior to actually isolating the behavior, is to, in a way, once you've acknowledged this point, is to eliminate that person from participating for quite a while. So you literally kind of isolate them from the conversation. That's a more extreme situation. In a mid-performing group, the role of the leader or the facilitator is to actively facilitate that group. Keep them very pinpointed, targeted on the questions and on the process. Don't let them bird walk. You keep them focused. And so picking a simple process, the right process, and then you, the facilitative leader, sticking and trusting that process is what will allow them to get results in a short period of time. In a high-performing team, the role of the leader is largely to stay out of the way. What you need to do, it's like a pilot in a plane. You need to take the plane off safely. And so in a typical group, that is telling them what you've done before this meeting, what the outcomes for this meeting will be, what process is going to be used, and then you kind of get out of the way, and then you need to land the plane at the end of the meeting. Landing the plane is summarizing what's happened what the agreements are, what the next steps are, what the pre-work will be for the next meeting. That's the role of a leader in a high-performing teams. We all want high-performing teams. That's a take-home message in almost every one of my presentations. They're more productive and they require less management and less facilitation. The next tier on this performance continuum talks about the level of duration that a task needs to take to be complete from start to finish. And so the level of duration for a low performing team, it's often like the span of the meeting. They don't have a lot of patience. They don't have a lot of capability as a group. 
to really uh, tackle issues. So you give them really short chunks of work to focus on. Mid-performing team, they can take on a task that might take three or four meetings to accomplish. They'll have enough patience. It's the high-performing team, once again, that takes on the the long-term work. They have the patience, they have the discipline, and they have the confidence to do that kind of work. The next tier, which goes hand in hand with duration, is the complexity of the task. It just stands to reason. A group that's fairly low performing, they gotta take on really straightforward work. They're not, they're capable as individuals, but in their team dynamic, they're not capable of taking on anything more than what's straightforward that often wouldn't even be necessary to have a group conversation. But by taking it on, it's like training wheels for the group. It allows them to see that they can actually be capable of taking on a topic. You're actively managing. They're not crazy. They just have some group dynamics that get in their way. And so by taking on a straightforward issue, they actually can get some results. A mid-performing team, they can take on what's called complicated work. Complicated work is still dealing with small parts, but multiple strands or strategies of small parts that need to be well choreographed and timed one to the next. And it's the high performing teams that can take on the truly complex work. Complexity and complex work has to do with issues that involve culture, issues that involve multiple departments or teams, where there's a lot of dynamics across that need to be considered, where the whole of the system needs to be considered in the work. That's complex work. And all the way down at the bottom of this performance continuum, you get down to what process is best for lower performing teams, straightforward, discrete processes that have a very focused ability to get to the task, they can get that task done, that component of the work done in very short periods of time, and anybody can follow that kind of process. That's what you want to use. Processes like the discussion method, appreciative inquiry, after action review, and several others that you'll see on the chart. For complicated work, you can use all of those processes in addition to something like the workshop method or the four-step action planning process. Both of those processes are designed for complicated work, multiple strands of strategy that need to be well choreographed in terms of timing. And when you take on the complex work, that's when you need processes that really deal with the whole of systems. That's the process Enneagram, mental models, or a sequence, a choreographed sequence of the simpler processes, but following the steps of the Enneagram. So I've gone through this performance continuum. It allows you to diagnose where your team is, tells you what role you need to take, tells you the duration and complexity of the task, all the way down to selecting the right process to do the work. It's a great model. It's a great tool for leaders to understand. If you want to learn more about this particular model, it's written about in the book that Michael Grinder and I wrote. It's from Cat Herding to Leadership. So check that out on the website. I hope this has been useful. It's been nice talking with you today. We'll see you again soon.